If you know anything about me, you know I love playing with new technologies. We're not talking about that today though. This video is about my 2023 stack. All of these technologies are things I already use every day and plan to throughout the year. Also, if you couldn't have guessed, we're going all in on serverless this year because it has made my experience developing so much smoother. And as such, all the technologies we pick will be based around how well they work with serverless and how well they solve problems unique to serverless. All that said, Let's go in. Before we can talk about technologies, frameworks, and libraries, we have to determine what language we're building with. There's been a language renaissance for the web over the last few years with things like Rescript and Rust really gaining traction. That all said, the language with the best support and the most compatibility with the vast majority of the web is still JavaScript. And thankfully, you don't actually have to write JavaScript because there's this wonderful language a lot of y'all already know about called TypeScript. TypeScript lets you write your JavaScript without a lot of the common foot guns and issues you would run into, and you can generally move much faster with autocomplete helping you every step along the way. TypeScript made a language that I hate, JavaScript, into the only language I use. That's right. I don't use other languages for the backend anymore. As much as I loved Elixir and as much as Rust was interesting to me, I found a one language stack to be really hard to beat, and TypeScript as your backend and frontend is a really powerful combination, especially when you use it in conjunction with frameworks that are considerate of both sides, such as React and Next.js, both of which I will be shipping aggressively throughout the year. Next.js is still the best framework I have found for connecting my back end and my front end in logical ways without making things too complex. Before React, I refused to touch the front end and spent all of my time in back end land. The combination of React and TypeScript made me like front end so much, I moved really far into it, eventually becoming a full time front end developer. Since then, Next pulled me back into the middle so I can do back end and front end in a single code base with a really good developer experience. I don't necessarily love all of the built ins. I'm excited about the app directory and the new things going on there but there are cooler ways to actually manage your data between your backend and your frontend in frameworks like Next. My favorite, obviously, is TRPC. And the best way to use these things together is create T3 app. Although I love Next.js, I'm not necessarily fond of how you get data to and from your backend and frontend. This is changing with the new app directory, and I am very excited about the direction it's going in. I do intend to play with it more, but for the time being, I still highly recommend using TRPC in all of your Next.js applications if you're using Next.js for your backend. TRPC is the best experience I've ever had by far connecting my backend to my frontend. I, I know this sounds like a big exaggeration and I know most of y'all have probably tried it by now, but if you haven't, please, seriously, I know it doesn't look that great from the front. I know it's all confusing. It took me way too long to sit down and finally try TRPC, but just trust me on this one. TRPC will make you move faster than you've ever moved before. Once it clicks, it's the best part of TypeScript, which is the autocomplete for your backend and your frontend with really convenient type safety across everything. It makes GraphQL feel bad developer experience wise. GraphQL is still great. I love it. I hope I don't need to use it anytime soon, but if I do, I will. TRPC is my solution for so many different problems. And the best way to get TRPC set up in your Next.js application is using Create T3 app. Even if you're not using TRPC, Create T3 app is such a great developer experience. Everything from how it handles environment variables to the documentation and the quality of descriptions for every file and what they do to the integrations between the common technologies that we'll be talking about more of here. Create T3 app was built by hundreds of hardworking contributors who ship this technology every day, combining our knowledge and our best practices and how we use these things to give you the best, simplest starting point with all of the T3 stack technologies. Please give it a shot if you haven't yet. Create T3 app is incredible. I'll put a link in the description so you can go give it a star as well to reward the hard work of the team that's been grinding on Create T3 app now for eight or nine months. Such a cool project. With Create T3 app comes a few other pieces. The important ones to talk about here are Tailwind, Prisma, and next off, now known as AuthJS. All of these are still part of Create T3 app, and that's for a good reason. They're all battle tested and ready for production. I love all these technologies, although two of them a little bit less so lately. Well, we'll talk about that later. Tailwind will still be in every project I build for a very long time. I love this stack. This is going places, but we should talk about the things that aren't part of the T3 stack that I'm shipping as well. There are some cool ones in here. First, we have a different framework. Yes, I'm leaving behind next in some cases. I don't find Next to be particularly strong suited for static sites and applications, things like documentation, things like blogs. It is a good way to use one stack to build them and the result that comes out is fine. But if you really wanna get the best possible performance out of a static site, a tiny bits of interaction sprinkled in, Astro has been an incredible experience for everything from blogs to docs to quick APIs I wanna stub out on the edge. Astro has proven to be a really really powerful and fun way to play with all sorts of different technologies. Astro is kind of a static site builder, kind of a dynamic web app server. 
It does a lot of different things, but the result is I kind of feel like I can build my own framework. And depending on what I specifically need, Astro has proven to fill all the gaps that a more focused framework like Next leaves. And I do think the next generation of frameworks are going to be built on Astro the same way this generation of them was built on top of Vite. It's an additional layer of abstraction, but it's a very, very enticing one, and I couldn't be more hyped on where Astro is going. What happens when you have a Next project and an Astro project and all of these different things inside of one code base? How do you deal with all of that? Do you just have hundreds of repos? I used to, because for a long time, monorepo sucked. Now that I have all of these different technologies and solutions solving entirely different problems, and I need to keep them all organized, hundreds of repos, it gets chaotic. Thankfully, there's a library that's meaningfully solved this for me, Turbo Repo. God, I, I didn't think I would bite the bullet on this one, but I am all in now. Turbo Repo has made my life managing gigantic applications so much easier. Turbo Repo is focused on doing two things for your code base, caching and encapsulation. The result is blazingly fast. The encapsulation aspect is trying to take the different things in your app, the backends, the front ends, the auth solutions, the mobile apps, the blogs, the docs, and all of these different things that might be entirely different code bases with different package JSONs and let you separate them logically. If you have a UI package you want to be shared between three different apps, if you have an ESLint config that you want to reuse between multiple projects, Turbo Repo makes it trivial to combine all of those into one repository. And that's why we're using it on Create T3 app, Create T3 Turbo, and a lot of the other things that we're building, obviously TRPC as well. Turbo Repo has made our lives as maintainers of big applications much easier, and it significantly improves the performance we see both in local dev and in building on our servers and CI and on our deployments. It's a great project. Check it out if you haven't already. It's made our builds way, way faster. There's a bunch of other technologies that I am shipping that I do not have time to list in this video. That doesn't mean any of them are bad or don't deserve the spotlight. It's just these aren't the things I felt I had enough to talk about. A lot of them Y'all have already heard about, but here's a pile of logos. And I'll also put a link in the description to all of the things that we talked about today. I really hope this was a helpful video. I couldn't be more hyped about building with these technologies this year. I'm really excited to show off all the stuff we're doing in 2023. You're going to see two videos here about the other parts of my stack. One is focused on the tools I use and one is focused on the infrastructure I deploy with. So if you want to learn more about how I develop on my machine, as well as how I actually ship the things that I'm developing with, check those out. Thank you. Peace nerds.